Today we're speaking with Dr. Stacy Mulder, Assistant Professor in the Department of Breast Medical Oncology in the Division of Cancer Medicine at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. PARP inhibitors are showing promise in hard to treat breast cancers like triple negative. Would you tell us a little bit about your research? Sure. We're, we've done this clinical trial where we're combining uh, the PARP inhibitor and apronib into, with uh, Berenitecan, which uh, inhibits, is a chemotherapy drug that inhibits topoisomerase 1. This results in increased uh, single strand breaks and DNA fragmentation, which in certain uh, tumor types may actually increase the increase tumor cell death when combined with PARP inhibitors. So um, there are a lot of studies ongoing that look at PARP inhibitors in combination with chemotherapy. We think this is a particularly interesting study because we allowed patients who had um, ER positive disease to go on this clinical trial, and they make up about 30% of the patient population, which is a little bit different than other PARP inhibitor studies, which focused on triple negative cancers or cancers with BRCA1 and 2 mutations. This particular study asks the early questions about drug tolerance. Was it in line with what, you, what would be expected from a cancer treatment, or was it better? It actually was a little better, and this is a phase one study, so it's a small number of patients, so you can't, um, you can't really 100% say that it's, it's uh, less, um, less toxic. But what we found, we actually gave um, the inaprinib um, on days one, um, four, eight, and 15, I'm sorry, one, four, eight, and 11 of a 21-day cycle, and arenatecan was d given at days uh, one and eight of a 21-day cycle. The nipronib was fixed at eight milligrams per kilogram, and the dose escalation component of the study involved the chemotherapy, the arenatecan. And we, we, we studied doses from 80 milligrams per meter squared to 125 milligrams per meter squared. And what we found was the regimen was actually um, very well tolerated. We had one dose limiting toxicity of diarrhea um, that is not uncommon with arenatecan. Overall, the incidence of diarrhea, grade three to four diarrhea, was around 9%, which is actually less than we see with arenatecan alone. And the rates of neutropenia were around 18%, which again is, is similar to what, um, if not a little bit less than what's seen with single agent arenatecan. What we thought was very promising about the study was that the response rate was higher than we typically see with arenatecan. In this patient population, um, patients who have received at least two lines of treatment for metastatic breast cancer, we've got, we found a response rate of, um, of 32%, which is higher than previous reports with arenatecan alone of 23%. These patients had received a median of two prior therapies would they be classified as hard to treat? And is that the class of patients for which these drugs would eventually be intended? Uh, we do consider that to these patients to be um, hard to treat patients. The response rate in the third line setting is much lower than in the first line setting for metastatic breast cancer. In particular, again, this was heavily weighted for triple ne negative breast cancer given the interest for these drugs in that, in, uh, that tumor subtype. Um, but we, we, so we were excited to see a response rate of 32%. That's not something that we usually see in phase one clinical trials. Um, we think that um, the combination makes sense based on how the chemotherapy interacts with the DNA and how it can affect um, not only single strand breaks, but double strand breaks in the DNA, which um, may be uh, lethal for cancer subtypes, not only BRCA1 or 2, um, uh, mutation uh, carriers, but also patient, I'm sorry, also tumors that are in a hypoxic environment or that have um, loss of function of BRCA1 or 2. What role is this collaborative team playing in the continued study of PARP inhibitors? We have a number of, um, uh, we're working with Lindsay, Dr. Lindsay Harris at Yale, and um, there's a lot of uh, collaborative work built into this project. So we plan to analyze um, archived tumor samples to measure hypoxia, uh, we, a marker of hypoxia. We also plan to, to measure for BRCA, the presence of BRCA1, which is measured by immunohistochemistry and is available in the poster. So we're trying to co find correlates of response for these tumor types. This regimen will also be um, will also proceed forward in a very interesting trial led by Carrie, uh, Carrie Anders um, at uh, UNC through the uh, Translational Breast Cancer Research Consortium, which is looking at this regimen in uh, patients with metastatic disease in the brain, uh, triple negative breast cancer. So we're very excited to be um, that the that the data from this trial could help Carrie to plan her trial, and, and that this regimen will move forward in, in high risk patients. 
ultimately, we'd like to see this regimen move forward in a larger phase two study. Um, and if there shows, again, promise, then to move forward in, in the treatment of um, uh, early state, I'm sorry, in the treatment of first line metastatic breast cancer, or even consider a neoadjuvant or adjuvant study if, if it continues to look as promising. Dr. Mulder, thank you so much.